So in today's video, we're going to paint this sort of uh, whimsical raccoon illustration. Towards the end, I'll reveal three secrets uh, that I think will help you refine your own drawing style. This time, I'm using the Forrester paper texture to get the watercolor effect. And for the brushes, I'm just using the ones in the regular watercolor kit. And to start painting, I'm going to first select the abstract round brush and a pretty warm light gray color and I'm going to fill out all the gray portions of the raccoon. After that, I'm going to use the eraser brush set to the fine liner pen, and I'm going to cut back the uh, gray here that went beyond the edges of the sketch and just remove all the excess. And after that, I'm going to make a new layer and do the same thing with the pants. And after that, I can move on and do the bicycle frame. And that's going to be on its own layer as well, so I'll make a new layer above everything. For the brush, I'm going to do it all with the fine liner pen and a couple different shades of this uh, yellow-orange color. And after that, I'm going to switch the color to black and I'll do the pedals and the seat and the handlebars are going to be done in red. And after the color for all these uh, main elements have been laid down, we can move on and start adding a couple of details and we're going to start with the face. Now all these details are going to be on their uh, own layer. So I'll make another new layer above everything. And for the brush, I'm going to use the Freysonette brush, which is a default Procreate brush I've mentioned in a previous video, but you can find it under the drawing tab. And here it is, Freysonette. It just has a really nice kind of organic, chalky scratchiness to it. And I'm going to use it by uh, setting the color to black and just filling out all the black details. And I think while I'm at it, I'll uh, use the same brush and black color to do the stripes on the tail. Next, I'm going to change the color to pure white. And I'm going to do the same thing basically, but this time I'm just going to fill out all the white details. And next, if you want to, uh, you can blend where the nose meets the face. So for that, I need to go back to the watercolor kit and use the water blender brush. And I'll just soften that uh, boundary there. Now at this point, the uh, illustration is really flat looking because we haven't added any shadows or highlights. And we'll add those in a minute. Uh, for now, I'm going to move on and add a couple of textures to the raccoon and the pants. So for the raccoon, it's pretty easy. I just want to make sure that uh, that gray layer, that first one, is selected here. Then I'll make a new layer just above it. For the color, I think I'll use a kind of dark tone like that. And I'm going to switch back to the Freysonette brush we used earlier, this one. And then at a, a really small size, I'm just going to carefully go over this and add this dark kind of dashed scratchy tone. And of course, it's going to be way too strong at first. So that's why I did it on its own layer here. And I'm going to set the transparency mode for that to multiply. Then I'll just lower it and set it to a point where the pattern is pretty subtle. There we go. And once you're happy with how it looks, I'm just going to merge it with the gray fox layer just to keep my layers kind of organized. And I can move on and do the pattern on the pants. So once again, I'll make a blank layer above the pants. And this time I'm going to use pure white, same brush and everything, maybe a little bit larger. And I'm going to add some stripes onto these pants. And once the stripes are done, I'm going to use the eraser brush to kind of cut them back where they overlap on the seams and the cuffs. And this time, I'm not going to set this layer to multiply. I'm just going to leave it at normal. But I will lower it to a point where the pattern is a little more subtle. Then I'll merge it together with the uh, red pants layer. And now once the uh, textures are finished, we can finally move on and do the shading. And I'm going to start with the body of the raccoon. So I want to make sure that layer is selected. 
and I do all my uh, shadows with the selection tool set to freehand. And as an example, uh, I want to add a shadow under the neck, so I'll make a selection in that area. Then I can just the, use the uh, hue, saturation, and brightness to darken it. And that's basically the process I use for all the hard shadows. So I'm going to go through and add all the hard shadows onto the uh, body of the raccoon. After that, I'm going to use a similar technique to do soft shadows. So again, freehand selection tool, and I'm going to select this area on the back. But I'm going to feather out the selection to soften the edge. And when I darken it, we get a shadow, but it has a very soft edge. And I'm going to use that technique to do all the uh, soft shadows here. Now, for the hands and the feet, I want them to have a kind of ombre fade to black. And I can use a pretty similar technique for that. So if I select both hands like that, and feather out that selection quite a bit. Now when I darken it, I'm going to darken it all the way to black, basically. And that's how I get that nice fade. I'll do the same thing on the feet as well. And now to finish up the shading, I'm going to move on and do the pants. So once again, I need to make sure that's the layer I've selected. And I'm going to go through and use the same technique I covered earlier to do the shadows on the pants. At this point, the illustration is almost done. I just need to add some outline details. And for that, I'm going to make a new layer that's above everything else. I'm going to switch the color to pure black. And I'm going to go back to the regular watercolor brushes and switch to the fine liner pen. And I want to give a kind of fuzzy or furry outline. So for that, I need to set the size pretty small. And I'm going to go all over the edge here where I want a little more contrast to be. And I'm going to do this broken furry outline like this. And just like with the texture we did earlier, uh, this outline is way too strong just by itself. So I need to adjust the transparency of it. So I'm going to set this one to multiply. Then I can adjust it like this. Personally, it's hard for me to see the outline with the sketch on. So I'm going to switch that off when I do this. And then I can set it to a point where the outline is just barely visible. Next, I'm going to finish this up by adding a hard outline. And that's going to be on its own layer as well, so I'll make a new layer above everything. Same black color we used before, same fine liner pen, but a little bit of a larger size. I think that's pretty good. And I'm going to start by finishing up the face details here. And I'm going to go through the whole illustration just like this. Uh, very, very sparingly at a hard outline, wherever there needs to be a little more depth and detail. And just like I did with the previous outlines, I'm going to set this one to multiply as well. And I'm going to lighten it, but these are generally going to be the darkest outlines, so I won't lighten it as much as I did the previous one. And there we go. This cute raccoon illustration is all done. And here's a close-up look at the final result. So in this illustration, there are kind of three key things that I kept in mind when I was sketching out the original plan. The first one is something I've mentioned before, and it's the expression. I've intentionally made it sort of mixed and vague and unclear. I've always felt that a kind of complex or more serious expression on a simple character really has a nice contrast. The second key thing here is the color palette. We've got red, yellow, black, white. It couldn't really be much more simple than that. Another thing I kept in mind here is kind of how the black is distributed. 
Uh, sometimes it can look unbalanced when all the black elements are kind of clustered to just one area of the illustration. So when I'm planning all this out, I try to keep that in mind and sometimes I'll add black in certain areas just for the sake of balance. Now the last key thing is pretty subtle. So I made the bicycle frame kind of wobbly and sketchy on purpose uh, just because it contrasts so well with the smooth curves on the raccoon. This kind of has the same effect as key number one does. I think mixing contrasting emotions and textures is an easy way to make your illustration style bolder and less babyish, which is something I'm always trying to avoid. And with that, uh, I think that pretty much wraps it up. As always, if you think I've earned it, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you're looking for a simpler project to kind of uh, warm up a little bit, I highly recommend checking out my moth tutorial here. It's my favorite video of all time.